My name is Simon Asuline, and I want to say thank you guys so much for, uh, for I'm going to be speaking for a while, so like I don't want you to like record it, you know? You're going to be like, your arms are going to fall off by the time I'm done. Do it. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's all good. Thank you, bro. So, my name is Simon Asuline, so I've been coming to Muna Mondays, you know, for like, I think over a year now, and I uh, wanted to give a little brief introduction about myself and why I decided to uh, try to speak tonight at uh, Muna Mondays. Usually, I don't speak in front with paper. If anybody knows me, I know Yakil knows me from NCSY. Like, if I, to start, if I were to start talking, you know, it's not with any papers, but uh, the, I think the message that I wanted to share tonight, if I were to just keep speaking, which I can just do, I, I wanted to make sure that I focus my thoughts, so I wrote it down, and I wanted to uh, share with you this idea. So yesterday uh, was my sister's birthday. My sister is the name that he always shares, that Matthew always shares, Gabriel Masoda Batsara for an Aliyah. And it was her English birthday yesterday, so we celebrated, we had people over the house. And I wanted to speak a little bit about my sister Gabby, about the life of Gabby, and um, you know, just share some ideas like that. So, <clears throat> when a lot of people pass and they, you know, you hear stories about their life, they're like, wow, she was like, you know, they were such an angel, they were the most perfect person, they were incredible, they never did anything wrong. I'm not here to talk about any of that, that is not true when it comes to my sister. Her and I, we, we would argue, we'd get pissed off at each other, we would, you know, fight. We would always have these arguments, and I'm always thinking back now, like, you know, maybe I shouldn't have done that kind of stuff, but, you know, it's too late, but that's what made her real. You know, she had these funny things, like her tendencies, and I know right now, as I'm speaking, she's probably rolling her eyes, you know, she's probably looking at me laughing, you know, like, what an idiot, but, you know, I'm serious, bro, like, she was definitely, definitely doing this, but this is who she is, so this is what made her real. I'm not going to lie anything about who she was, this is who she was. She was an amazing person full, filled with her own quirks. You know, one of them being, for example, if I were to make food for myself in the house, she would say, okay, you have half, the other half is for me. She was sleeping when I made it. And she was like, you get half, I get the other half. I was like, what are you talking? I'm making it for me. And she's like, no, 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 you get half. And then if my little brother was in the house, divided three ways. I'm like, I made this for me. I'm making my own freaking thing, you know? Whatever. So this is how she was. So her Leviah was on, her funeral was on Rosh Kodesh. And then the Shloshim, which is 30 days later, was also on Rosh Kodesh. On Rosh Kodesh, you can't say any eulogy. You can't speak about a person. So you couldn't speak about Gabby. I was trying to, I spoke at the funeral, but you have to walk a fine line about, I can't talk about her, but I'm trying to talk about her. But you couldn't do it because it's Rosh Kodesh. So now, thank God, I think it's a good opportunity to speak a little bit about Gabby and to speak about her life. Uh, and I wrote I wrote these things down. There's no better place to do it than Amuna Mondays. And I'll, no joke, I'm not a promo, not a, not a DM hashtag. You know, this is for real. There's no better place than with Matthew than to do it for Amuna Mondays. So, like I said, my sister and I did not get along very well all the time. Uh, we did pretty well, but not all the time. And uh, she, I loved her. She loved me, I hope. And uh, that's... A lot about it. We argued a lot, but I have endless stories, like I said, about her weird tendencies. And I, I laughed when I wrote this, and she's probably rolling her eyes. So my sister Gabby, she was born with a disease that manifested when she was like 14, right? She it's called FOP. But she had eight people in the world, no joke, eight in the world had. She had this disease called FOP. She had a special uh, variant that had bones grow in her body, new bones. You know, imagine like you break one of your bones, she had new bones that would grow, and that was her disease. She was completely immobile. She would, it was very hard for her to move, very hard for her to live. She couldn't get in and out of her bed by herself. She couldn't, um, for example, she couldn't pick her own hair up. As a woman, think about it, as a girl, you can't even do your own hair. That's when she taught me how to tie a ponytail, so after it got worse, she wasn't able to lift her arms. And it, it isolated her, it was very hard for her to to do things because she felt like she was this, uh, you know, pariah. When she would go out of public circle, she felt like everybody's looking at her. So she isolated herself for a big portion of her life. And I would always push her. I'm like, Gabby, come on, let's move out. Like, let's go do something. Let's go to this event. Let's go to the social something. Let's like, let's get, let's go do something, right? So she was like, no, no. Eventually, she found her own way in her life. You know, maybe her schedule was a little bit off from what we wanted for her but she was happy, she was content. One day she finally said, you know what? I'm going to, what's good? And so one day she said, I'm finally going to get out. I'm gonna live, I'm gonna go do something. My other sister lives in Denver, right? So she said, I'm gonna book a ticket 
She bought a flight. She said, I'm going to go. For months, this was months in advance, every single detail about the flight, because she's so handicapped accessible, she was making sure that every detail of getting off of the car, getting into the airport, going through the airport, getting onto the jet bridge, getting to the gate, getting to the seat of her plane, and then once in Denver, getting to the front of the, getting in front of the airport, every detail was taken care of. She had every single thing worked out. And going there, my mom was going through the airport with her. And uh, I'll never forget that morning that I was so excited. Everyone was so excited that night, like she's gonna go see Gabby, she's gonna go see Ariella in Denver. That morning, my mom woke me up. I was about to get up anyway to go to work, get ready, go to work. My mom wakes me up, she said, Simon, there was an accident, Gabby never made it to the plane. And I'll never forget that, it was like February 27th, 2022. Gabby never made it to the plane, what the hell are you talking about? She said she's at the hospital. They said urgent care, she fell, she broke her neck, she's paralyzed, neck down, this is what happened. It's what we woke up to. My mom, this is like seven in the morning, my mom rushed back to the airport, uh, to the hospital. She was there all Shabbat, we have no idea what's going on. That Shabbat, she died three times and she had her heart back to normal, she would like, you know, flatline, they would resuscitate her, flatline, resuscitate. And this is uh, what happened, and from this point, started an 11 month journey of her being in the hospital until she ultimately, until she passed. So it's not a sob story, but we want to talk a little bit about what this story meant, right? And things that we can take away from it. She never complained once. She had this disease that she was living in more, the most pain than anybody can imagine every single day. You know, there were times where she'd be like three in the morning, she would fall out of her bed, right? Because she couldn't move well. And then once she's on the floor, she couldn't get up. So she's on the floor, like, you know, not in the hospital, I'm saying back at home, you know, she was back on the floor and she would just like start yelling out for my dad, dad, dad. My dad would like be like, what the hell is that? He would wake up from his sleep, dad would come out. He sees his daughter on the floor, she can't move, right? This is. Gabby's life. This is the pain that she never talked about. She never complained about it. I don't know if any of us are going through stuff in our own lives and we're like, oh, life is hard. You guys, I don't care what you have and we're all men, we can talk about this. You guys have nothing hard. I'm no joke. That's not, I'm not here to like yell at anybody, but God forbid. I'm just saying like straight up, nobody has anything hard at all. You see what she went through? She never complained. You guys do not have it hard. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, so, it was around a year ago today. Like I said, anybody that just walked in, it was her birthday yesterday. That's why I'm talking about her. So last year for her birthday, she was just in the hospital for like a month and a half. And I posted on my Instagram story. I said, you know, we made a wish list of the kind of stuff that she wants for her birthday. So I posted on my story. And I said, if anybody is up for grabs, you know, anybody can just like, here's a link, buy something, whatever. If you don't have to, just, you know, here it is. Right, and I explained the story. I put the GoFundMe. I get a swipe up from MVP Awesome, so I'm thinking like MVP Awesome is Matthew Parrott. I haven't spoken to this guy in a while, hope he's doing well. He swipes up, says, send me the whole wish list, send me everything. I'm like, okay, so I send it to him. Next I know, everything's taken care of. The whole wish list is, uh, is bought out. And then he also says, he says, uh, can I bring a few people to the hospital to go visit her? We haven't had really any visitors to go see Gabby outside of the family, outside of the media family. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. So he went with like five people. He saw her for five minutes, but they brought her for her birthday to go see my sister. And from here, this was the moment that, this is why I said Amuna Monday is the only right place to do this. I don't talk about her really life so much outside on a public forum, but Amuna Monday is the only place to do it because Matthew was the guy that brought so much together and brought so many people to go see my sister. And he did this every single day for a whole year. Yeah, so thank you. He did this every single day for an entire year um, of her being in the hospital. And they formed this bond that was incredible, right? Like truly something special. And I uh, wanted to close off on a couple more points that the last week and a half of her life, she was suffering, you know, since she got into the hospital, we were always hopeful. We were like re remodeling our house so that we can make it more uh, accessible for her and the life that she's gonna be living now as a quadriplegic. Around Thanksgiving time was when it started deteriorating her health and we were still hopeful, but the last week and a half, when we knew that it was gonna get rough, 
she was in a coma. And when we breathe, we breathe in and out CO2. Comes in, goes out. But if it stays in the body, it's like a poison. Her lungs stopped working at a certain point that she couldn't breathe out the CO2. So inside the body, it was like a poison. The last month, week and a half, that's what was really going on. Her lungs were at capacity. She was on the ventilator. Nothing was working. She was at 100% capacity. We couldn't help her. We knew what was going to happen. All right, so the last day of her life, we go in. She's being kept alive by a bag, by a tube, by a fluid. And we're watching the bag. It's just our family in the room, our lawyer, the rabbi, and Matthew. So we're all watching the bag go down. And uh, we see the final drop. And we're all, like, in this moment watching. The nurse walks in. This nurse had zero care for what was going on in the room. You can ask him. We called her Wacky Mackie. Her name was Mackie. She was... We're all, imagine this situation. You're watching, like, my sister literally die. Like, this guy, she comes and she's like, the bag's empty. Do you guys want to do it again? And, we're like, and we gave her the memo. We're not going to redo it. She was like, you guys want to... You guys want to replenish it? We're like, what? Mackie. But... <laughs> and she was like, oh, 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 my bad, my bad. So then, then she'll walk out. So we watched, you know, my sister as like the heart rate is going down. And this is a story about anything that happens in life. There's no coincidence. There's no, oh, maybe it's me. Maybe it's not for me. What is this supposed to teach me? Everything that happens is happening for you. And there's a reason for it. And here's like this uh, story about how my sister left this world. So this bag empties, right? The rabbi's there. The rabbi tells my father, you have to go say Shema for her. You know, go to her, say Shema, say the whole thing. My dad's like, not yet. The bag just emptied. That was the only thing keeping her alive. So he should get up and go say it right away. My dad's like, not yet. <clears throat> An hour goes by. And this time doesn't feel like normal time, but like suddenly an hour goes by. And I'm like, Dad, come on. You know, like, it's not how she's still alive. Go and, uh, you know, say it. He's like, not yet. Another, like, 30 minutes goes by. I'm like, Dad, get up. You know, go say Shema. He's like, no, not yet. And Gabby's still alive at this point. 10 minutes later, he just gets up on his own. 10, 15 minutes later, just gets up. He says the Shema. You know, Shema Yisrael, Shem Elkeinu, Shem Echad. And he says the whole thing, all three paragraphs. The last word of the Shema is what? No, no, like, the last... The last I met. Okay, yeah, there you go. I met. See, you guys all failed. Like, take off the keepers. <laughs> so it's a met. And on that last word, a met, no joke, you can ask Matthew the last word. At that very second he said it, heart rate dropped to zero, she passed. And when I was saying about the CO2, walking into that room, seeing my sister on her final day, with all the CO2 and all the poison that's in her body. Her face was red, her body was red, her eyes, because they couldn't close on their own because she's in a coma, is like bulged out. And she like, you know, they're popped out. We actually had to put tape over her eyes to keep them closed, right? The second she passed, everything was white. Pure stopped the, uh, if this is like too intense for you guys, by the way, I understand it's, it's not an easy topic, but it shows that every single moment is from Hashem. Hashem said, look, this was a hard challenge, obviously 11 months and we went through it, but you saw it meant, this is the truth. This is Hashem saying that this is bound to happen. There was no question. This is definitely from Hashem. And what we did for 11 months, what Gabby was the influence for, was that it's not just a sad story because what is the influence that she had? For 11 months, there was mitzvot around the world that she was the source for. There was Torah. There was Torah learning. There was... Uh, Tefila, there's Tehillim going around around the world for 11 months straight, non-stop. We had here in America, we had Israel, Argentina, Brazil, you name it. Every and then she was on the news. She was all over Korean news. You look her up now, Gabby Aswin, Korean news. It's like crazy news. All over the world. And this is her story, that she was the vehicle for so much bracha and so much um, potential of beauty in this life that we don't we don't understand. We will never understand what that is. But I wanted to personally say thank you to Matthew, who, because of you, she was able to have a voice and she was being able to be seen by so many people. She was the same person that isolated herself, saying, like, my body 
is going to ruin, like my body, I can't, I can't go out because I have so many things I want to do, but my body holds me back. She couldn't move. She didn't move from her hospital bed for 11 months at all. She, that bed was all she knew for 11 months. She was a quadriplegic. All she was able to move were her eyes. That's it. She couldn't move her head. She couldn't do this. The way we're all moving right now, standing, she couldn't do any of that. Just moving her eyes for 11 months. All she had was her mind. And you made it that she was able to have so much life in that 11 months. So we want to, again, say thank you to you. And um, I want to end off on something else. <clears throat> again, you see how I spoke? I don't, I don't look at the papers at all. Um, but this last moment, I'm going to close with this, that I wrote, trust in Hashem, no matter what. You have to live with the Muna. You have to understand that every single moment comes from Hashem. Understand deep in your heart, deep in your bones, that everything comes from Hashem and that in the end, it'll all be good. And if you feel like it's not good yet, it's because it's not the end. So, you know, with that, I want to say thank you. And I want to appreciate you again for all the stuff that you did for my family. You're a like, blood brother. And uh, thank you again. And thank you guys for listening. I appreciate it. So thank you.